Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Earth Science Screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to look at types of sedimentary rocks a little bit more closely. Remember, we have three major types. We have our clastic. We have our crystalline. And then we also have our bioclastic. So those are three types of sedimentary rocks. So we're going to take a look at each one of these a little bit more closely. Our first one up are clastic or fragmental sedimentary rocks. These form from the compaction and cementation of sediments or weathered material. Um, probably our most common or very typical sedimentary rock. An example would be a conglomerate. Conglomerate is nothing more than compacted petal, pebbles. So we can see here where we got this nice little rock hammer. See all these nice pebbles right here, some cobble sized pieces, all compacted together. And, and if we look a little bit more closely, we can see sand grains in there. And this will form under that pressure. These materials will be deposited horizontally and then just water will get forced out over time, helping to form this rock here or this conglomerate. Remember, clastic rocks, the particle size will determine the name of the sedimentary rock. So if we look at page seven, once again, we have our classic sedimentary rocks. Our largest grain size will give us conglomerate and brachia. Move down to sand, will give us sandstone. Silt, getting smaller, give us siltstone. And clay will eventually form shale. So notice that it's the difference in grain size that will give us the name of our clastic sedimentary rocks. So if we had a clastic sedimentary rock with a grain size of 0.2 to 0 0.006 centimeters, we go, oh, it's right there. It also tells us to find the coarse texture. Well, let's take a stroll over to the comments section and we see that it says find the coarse. So then this rock must be sandstone. It's as simple as that with clastic sedimentary rocks. So like I just said, it's going to be the grain size that is going to be determining the type of the sedimentary rock. If we look at these two samples, we could see pretty large uh, sediments in them. But there is a key difference. These are all rounded and these have jagged edges. These jagged edges, if we look back on our reference table, we can see pebbles, bobbles, colders. Okay, so that leads to two different types, conglomerate or breccia, but they're different because in the comment sections where they say one's rounded, one's angular. So we go back to our picture. We see the rounded fragments. This must be our conglomerate. This must be breccia because of the angular fragments. We have sandstone right here. Take a look at it, formed from the compaction and cementation of, well, let's take a look at the name. We could also look back at our reference table and make sure that sandstone forms from sand. Okay, if we look at shale a lot up and close, see once again, notice the parallel layers here, here, very, very fine parallel layers, or even right here, you can see them going across this way. So shale, because it's made up of very fine sediments, those clay particles will form very nice, thin, even layers. Then we have our chemical or crystalline sedimentary rocks. These, like I said, are formed from materials once dissolved into water. The water evaporates, in this case, the seawater, leaving behind those ions, which eventually form salts. These crystals will accumulate to give us our evaporites or precipitates. So rock salt, salt dissolved in water, water evaporates, and the salt hardens, leaving those crystals behind. Page seven, reference table, we could take a look, crystalline. And it tells us the crystal size and three common sediment, crystal and sedimentary rocks we may come across. And if you look in the comments section, crystals from chemical precipitates or evaporites. 
Okay, then our last and final sedimentary rock is organic or bioclastic type rocks. These are going to be forming uh, the result of biological processes. Examples are uh, coal, chalk, or limestone. If we go to page 7, once again, to our bioclastic, these two right here, and it tells us microscopic course, calcite and carbon are going to be our composition, but precipitates of biological origin or cemented shell fragments or compacted plant remains to bring us to coal and limestone. Okay, we have something like fossil limestone. And we can see little shell fragments in our fossil limestone all over. So this had a huge abundance of these fossils in it, or shell fragments that compacted and over time fossilized. Here's another example of fossil limestone. You can see them in there. So like we said, limestone is going to form from the accumulation of shells and animal skeletons. And if we look in this picture, we can see all of these shells right here. This is actually Coquina, another example of a sedimentary or a bioclastic sedimentary rock. Also, sometimes they you call it limestone. They're a little interchangeable, the two names. Chalk Cliffs of England, and these are all from plant, uh, sorry, from uh, shell remains right here. There's coal forming from decaying plant material. Plant material will accumulate, pile up on top of each other, on top and on top of. And what ultimately happens is a lot of pressure will force uh, a process called coalification to eventually form coal. So like I said, we have those plant remains right here. They accumulate, we apply pressure, and eventually through coalification, just the process that helps break down these carbon chains in here and to uh, produce hydrocarbons, which you learn about later on, uh, to form coal. One of the signature pieces of sedimentary rocks is that sedimentary rocks are the only type of rocks to contain fossils. So here we can see these fish are the only ones that we're going to see in sedimentary rocks. Same thing, the fish here, sedimentary rocks only. Europe Terebs, New York State fossil. Here it is, and that's the fossil in a sedimentary rock. More plant fossils, trilobite, dinosaur, keeps going. And it takes us to this. If we take a look at the crust or the surface, you can see that in the actual crust, it's mostly igneous rock. Remember, it's that magma cools and solidifies forming igneous rock. There's very little weathering and erosion inside the crust. On the surface, we increased weathering and erosion. So that's igneous rock breaks down to form sedimentary rock. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, the end of sedimentary rocks. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.